Inkling. And it looks like those are the characters of choice for those two, Joker and Inkling, respectively. Meanwhile, Beast and Juice are bringing out, looks like Pokemon Trainer, if I, if I understand that correctly, and F um, Falco. All right, so all, all these characters that are on board are phenomenal in dubs. Like, I think this is as true to doubles meta as you're going to see for this tournament. And there's a lot of good play that's going to be looked at. We've already saw a little bit earlier in the tournament with Beast and Juice that the combo potential of just Falco and Trainer themselves is really strong. That even getting a little bit of a sneak peek you mean right down to f tilt? And that's a lot of <laughs> what you're going to see, too. The synergy between a lot of uh, Pokemon Trainer's kits, specifically Ivysaur and Squirtles, and Falco, works really well together. Oh like, speaking of the Squirtle, God. First Blood is going to oh. go to the jab, confirm. Beautiful play. Oh, my heart. That was just beautiful. Yo, I saw that, trying though. to get a little greedy, too. Yeah, Beast, I see you, big dog. And you know what's going to be interesting here as well? Normally, when you see Pokemon Trainer play, you're going to, you always see Grotto for the first 40%, 40%, 40%, 40 50%, and then they swap the Ivysaur. Right. But in this scenario, I can imagine that Grotto is going to be more optimal because he's faster, he's quicker, he can get more light hits in, and it allows the, com the teammates to combo more. We do have a swap to Ivysaur, but I can't imagine this matchup unless damage percents are high then we're going to see a swap to Charizard from Beast. Yeah, Beast sticking around on the heavier Pokemon where it's necessary at the higher percentages isn't necessarily that much of a bane to him and uh, Juice's game plan, though, because they have a lot of kill power. Ivysaur himself, a powerhouse character. And then even if Beast is forced to choose into uh, Charizard, Charizard's sticking around for a long time. And both of those characters have plenty of opportunity to throw to Falco, who's always going to have an option to kill, whether it's from his own combo or throwing out smash attacks like that. Forward smash can be cleaning up shop real quick. Yo, poor Ivy's tour. I think my man just got up thrown to Oblivion. That, yo, put, press F in the chat for that planet. I'm sure Viridi isn't going to be very happy seeing that. But in, the, in any case, we are here two stocks of peace. We have 6 WX on his second Arsene, and that's going to make him a very devastating character to face right now with all that rage climbing up as well. Although, he is a pretty... Dead light, character is what you see. Dead character. <laughs> I was going to say light, but you know what? I think he's a little light on the next stock right there. Down to his last one. Meanwhile, Beast and Juice are still holding well. The worst damage um, opponent player on Red Team is Juice with the Falco 116. Not too much, but Squirtle getting obliterated. What, 98? What happened? Inkling happened. Uno is very confident with how well he's able to confirm his kills. And if you've noticed how he's trying to pilot around the battle, if he was trying to duck in, get some damage, duck out, let Six do a lot of the work with Joker. Because no matter what, Joker's getting his Rebels Guard up really far. The Rebellion Meter is going to build up crazy fast in dubs. And with Arsen, it allows Joker to be able to just come in, swing hard. He's going to have enough speed to be able to dance with Falco, as well as have enough of range with his normals to try and keep Squirtle and Ivysaur at bay. Not going to be able to do much against Charizard, but Charizard finds himself as combo food for the likes of both Joker and Inkling. Yeah, but I mean, only rare instances where Flare Blitz come out, you know, the, the good old Elite Smash tech thing right there. Hey, Charizard, Flare Blitz, no! Flare Blitz, oh. out of here! No, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to jinx that. <laughs> Man, but Just a further reminder, no matter how talented these players are, they're still human. They're still going to make dumb mistakes. I can only assume that that was meant to be some cheeky play for a highlight reel. But regardless, we do have um, Sick WX putting the combo on Beast, Pokemon Trainer getting abused. And this this is a situation where you, you're going to want to be Charizard because you need all the weight you can get. But at the same time, your combo food. So, do you go to charge off for the survivability, or do you go to uh, Squirtle just for the combos against your opponent and the mobility? And I think he's going to be choosing the ladder, noticing that Charizard just was not working out. But having to take all that percentage, is that going to be enough? There we go. Proper usage of the switches, not using, Ooh. not you losing his invincibility for switching just yet. Don't be too reckless with that. But Charizard is now out again. 116. Arson almost on deck for 6WF. This is looking like a bad situation. Shin. Yo, what's looking bad right now is the fact that Yellow Team keeps on rushing in on Beast. They cannot afford to do this. Look at that. Just like that. Six eviscerated. All of a sudden, this is hella doable for Beast. The there way, we go. Except he's going to get caught in the up smash, and Yellow Team going to snatch away that game one. You want to know how I knew that kill was going to kill? Not the animation, because we, we learned we can't rely on that. I saw Pokemon Trainer's face just instantly <laughs> get flushed. Like, you know, the full <laughs> anime, black lines. That's what Pokemon Trainer did as soon as that hit landed. Like, damn. Damn. I mean, there's high percentages. There's a lot of mixing going on at the end of that. And, like, off the platform, too, 
Inklings up smash while fresh? Forget about it. That's going to kill no matter what. Doesn't matter how heavy Charizard is. Yeah, I wouldn't trust doing an up air on Inkling on a platform. That is an up smash. If, you, if they read it right, an F smash. And do not doubt the KO power of all of those ink objects. I know everyone knows that those things hurt. Blaster, having a huge blast radius above you, and also scoops if you're close enough. You have the down smash, great range and KO power, and sends you off at a decent angle. And the, that paintbrush, it just, or ink brush, excuse me, uh, it, it just reaches way too far. Well, not too far. I like ink. Um, but it does reach a good amount that you have to respect it. It's pretty safe on shield. It's ridiculous. So, I mean, unfortunately, he got KO'd by one of those options. And I think in that scenario, it was just him feeling a little bit too confident from that KO he just did. It was great. I mean, that size of charge was everything he needed. But, you know, respect your opponent's play. We got to see if Red Team's going to be feeling themselves again as we go into game two because we're getting the complete run back, right back to PS2. I feel like the stage itself was actually working really well for Red Team. It was just... One mishap from Beast that really spelled demise for Red Team. Like that Flare Blitz into the Blast Zone, it left Juice defenseless for Yellow Team to pick him off. And then the 2v1 situation was just insurmountable. Back on fresh ground though, and Yellow Team up the game? I don't know, maybe we'll see ourselves go to a Game 3 just as easily as we got ourselves here because Red Team was playing pretty hot earlier. No, they they were all both playing well and Beast um, almost had the switch back. He was doing amazing plays. But right now with percentage evens, I think we're going to be seeing a run back until one person gets that one advantage because they both play phenomenally. They know what they're doing and they don't get frazzled over a single stock KO like we lost saw in the last game. You know, just because one stock gone doesn't mean you can't make that comeback. We have Miles over there, or Juice, I should say, um, really finagling off on the side. I, I, I know his Falco Ooh. did like the air, but just because Inkling's a... Come on, you can be down airing like that. Yes, Please. you can. If you're looking to take a lead, that's exactly what you're going to down air like. Man, that's ridiculous. But still, stocks are tied right now. Damage is almost the same. So still an even game by everybody. But watch out halfway up for that gauge of arson. Joker is um, looking a little scary right now. Never mind. Not nearly as scary as yeah. that back there. Yeah, he, he's looking pretty tan right now. He's not a threat. More like a joke. Like, ah, dad jokes. Like, Juice is doing a really good job of trying to keep himself not just alive and active in the battle, but also hang around the area where Beast is like trying to play, but there's dead zones. All the Pokemon out of Trainer have the, these dead zones that they just can't safely cover. So having your, uh, your teammate be right there waiting for someone to try and punish whatever you do wrong works out so well. And I feel like Red Team has just oh. had like complete Mastercraft play in game two. Like, look at the lead that they've built for themselves. The lead? Look at that KO. I mean, we just had two devastating down airs from the destructive duo of Beast and Juice. That thing was ridiculous. And then the fact that you went over there that far with Ivysaur, that is, that is confidence exuded, and I love it. Yeah, Ivy's able to go really deep. That character slaps. Characters, you're talking about a slap with that size, man. That forehead, to be honest, true. But still, we are we have the Joker putting a lot of combo, but using the switching from Ivy Sword is gonna be stable to start it out. Red team is in strong control and good looking like they're gonna take this back as they did last time. But this is Arsene Joker at 31%. So it's not impossible. As a matter of fact, he already took one stock, still has a good amount of Joker. And if he um, stalls it out just right, he has a lot of leeway, leeway to gain even more meter. But the more he gets hit, the more damage he's taking, the more he's going to lose this RSN while also being more devastating and more um, susceptible to being thrown into that blast zone. Yeah, with the Rebellion meter having dropped back down to zero, this is the part where Red Team has to get it done now or else they're not going to get it done at all. No, not at all. And look at how quick that arson is. And if you, you have to be careful. If you get the Rebel Guard, oh, almost, almost had it. If you get that Rebel Guard and if you let him arson, everything changes and your entire gameplay goes into a different momentum. Missing the combo right there, going for a grab release pummel. See if you're going to get the time. No, not the right Ars not the right mentality. And look with that, pixel away from arson. Look, arson. <laughs> you don't need arson now. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> Got it, but at what cost? We're going to game three, PK. <laughs> See, that's what I was talking about as we came into game two. Like, Red Team played it really well. Like, Beast and Juice have a very clear game plan on how they want to win this set. But they bungled it up. And Yellow Team, they have amazing awareness in doubles. They see those little mistakes. They stretch it as far as they can. And that's how they, we got ourselves into game three. Like, both opposite ends of the spectrum on really good, like, player sense when it comes to dubs. But they can only be one winner. 
So there can only be one, but we've seen a lot of great play from these um, two competitors, oh, two teams on the stage right now. It's, it's, it's just a good mix of, hey, I'm going to stay here. We know our play, we're going to mentality, and we're going to not get overzealous. They have a strong singles mentality. They're, they're also applying to strong doubles mentality. We saw a bit of flubs, like, especially with those grab release KOs at the end. We saw a bit of flubs. So it's not exactly perfect, but it shows that their idea, their mentality for dubs is in the right place. So we now um, look like look like the same character run back, no character swaps like we saw in the last game. But stage-wise, things are looking a little bit different for us. We're going into an Omega form for a stage, so final destination of, I believe this is um, Congo Falls? See, see, I'm just going to say this right now. I understand everyone is so good about Stick of Us Symphony and even the remix from Key King Rules trailer, but um, Crocodile Cacophony is that hidden banger. I need y'all to understand. There's so, a lot of Donkey Kong Country tracks that are no, amazing. It, it's so hidden. You guys gotta listen to it. The remix in this game is amazing. Unfortunately for Yellow Team, their gameplay isn't looking as amazing as that song. Already getting hit. Our sin is up, which is a blessing and a curse. I mean, yeah, you got our sin, but look at how much damage you had to take to get there. Oh, oh. Don't even look at the damage. What damage? It says zero. That's a zero right what? there. There's one less stock. <laughs> That's Red Team playing on fire right now. That is unfortunate. Uh, 63 x is getting completely cut off, and that's the thing. I think it shows that like, he saw that Arsene is going out, and normally, I mean, we're like, all right, I got Arsene, we can do it. Maybe 63 x just got extremely comfortable with, like, yeah, go do nothing to me. Oh, all right, I forgot to sketch it down there. All right, let me run that back, though. Like, both of the members of Yellow Team do such a good job of controlling space, but they don't get a chance to do that because Beast is just on their throats constantly. Oh, was that worth? Try it. Ah, man, I really don't know. That was, that like, was... Uno didn't need to lose that stock, but, hey, listen, if it's keeping them in the running for the set, if they if that's what they need to do, they just need to start swinging, might as well do it. We're looking at an even game, and Final Destination's really hard to control from all four of these characters because they can all control the stage really well. There's no safe space to land. The ledge will never be safe for anybody. Like, unless you find both members of a team way deep, this isn't claimed ground. You're going to see constant swinging on both ends. Well, right now we have 6 ABS swinging that knife and those feet back and forth, just covering every bit he can go. Right now, damage isn't too far out of the realm of a comeback for yellow. Stop talking. Yeah, Stop man. talking. You gotta be careful. Hang man, handle it. I can't. I can't. That's hey, the listen, third time. When, when Juice is on the hunt, you can never count him out. It doesn't matter where those numbers are. I mean, you're right, but Falcon I just. I, I devastating kill power in the air. And once again, run it back. I'm Look at this. I'm opening up a booth, man. I'm just call, <laughs> making second readings at this point. Twenty-five hundred dollars an hour. What? Like this? Well, this is just knowing how good these players are. Man, right now we have that Falco combo, the up tilt, and that back air with our sin. Not gonna be enough, but still throwing them off the side is more so of a warning shot. Make sure that you watch my back air. You stay away from my elbow room because you will get smacked up if you get stuck too close. See? I feel <laughs> like the, like one thing that could be done though to make things a little bit easier for Yellow Team is if six goes for grab swarm. Now it's a really specific. But the reason I say that is because now that Yellow Team has a little bit more t uh, time to breathe on the stage, we're seeing them separate really well. But when you go to cover that separation, you try to form to the 2v1, Six keeps on swinging on shields. You cannot do oh. that against Falco because then it leaves yourself open to the 2v1 situations. Uno bleeding here with Inkling at 102. This is a really difficult situation. You're looking at a fresh oh. trainer. And you're looking at the end of the game, that's going to be 2-1. That is unfortunate. We saw a lot of great play. And we saw some good teamwork from both of those players as well. Let's talk about that down here from Joker, um, from 6WX, on, not only onto his opponent, but his brother as well. Is that yeah. something that they talked about? Is that like, yo, man, if you ever get a situation, just go for it. We'll worry about this situation. We'll find it out later. All right, mom ain't going to know. We ain't going to know if it's going to throw it all out. Like, that was, you killed your brother to try and secure the game, but then you lost the game, so you killed your brother for nothing? 